Hey folks, today I want to share another poem with you and some thoughts on it. This is called Sympathy, and it's by Paul Lawrence Dunbar. I know what the caged bird feels, alas, when the sun is bright on the upland slopes, when the wind stirs soft through the springing grass, and the river flows like a stream of glass, when the first bird sings and the first bud opes, and the faint perfume from its chalice steals. I know what the caged bird feels. I know why the caged bird beats its wing till its blood is red on the cruel bars, for he must fly back to his perch and cling when he fain would be on the bough a swing, and a pain still throbs in the old, old scars, and they pulse again with a keener sting. I know why he beats his wing. I know why the caged bird sings, ah me, when his wing is bruised and his bosom sore, when he beats his bars and he would be free. It is not a carol of joy or glee, but a prayer that he sends from his heart's deep core, but a plea that upward to heaven he flings. I know why the caged bird sings. There, there's a lot going on in the poem itself, um, but this is a poem that has additional meaning based on how it's been referenced in the time since it was originally written. A lot of my students are not familiar with it. I often pair it with uh, Caged Bird by Maya Angelou, and of course that's also I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings is also the title of her memoir. Some of my students don't even know who she is, let alone who Paul Lawrence Dunbar is. I will say that American literature is usually the course after um, I've had them. I most often teach 10th grade and we teach American literature in 11th grade. So students are more likely to be introduced to Paul Lawrence Dunbar in 11th grade in American Lit. So in introducing this poem to them, quite often they talk about just freedom in a general sense and, and feeling constrained by things that have happened to you. And sometimes they just think it's about a bird. And so I gently start, you know, say, okay, so let's take a look at the author's life. If I introduce the idea, the, the information that the author's black, if they jump to the conclusion that this is a poem that's about slavery. And then I introduce the idea of, I, I give his lifespan, his birth and death dates. And we start looking a little bit more deeply. And we also talk about um, the use of personal experience in poetry, um, as well as, of course, metaphor. It's challenging sometimes to let students explore a poem especially when you have really 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 strong ideas of your own as a teacher of what the poet is trying to say and you have more context than the student does and you're really introducing them to something that you have a lot more information with and you have a lot more experience with but at the same time you don't want to just like dump the information on them and say this is what the poem is about this is what the poet's trying to say because if it was that straightforward, they wouldn't have written a poem. That's not what poetry is about. That's not what poets do. So it's sort of about, you know, it, it involves looking at the poem and then looking beyond the poem and through the poem to that additional information and sort of using it together to find meaning and to explore the words and the phrasing that are used. We also talk about this in terms of poetic structure. The It has a clear rhythm and a rhyme scheme that students often find, you know, students are usually able to find the rhyme scheme. Rhythm they struggle with a little bit more, but it's not just A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D. So it goes a little bit more back and forth than they're used to. It also helps that it's set up in stanzas. They're able to recognize that. That helps them recognize this is a poem. Um, so we look at some of that as well. And we also talk about the fact that the poet doesn't just come out and tell us why the caged bird sings. The poet does tell us that it's not for funsies. It's not a carol of joy or glee. He's not singing because he's happy. It doesn't say what 
he is feeling. It says he's, it's not joy, it's not glee. But it doesn't tell us what it is. And the fact that it tells us what it's not, but doesn't tell us what it is, invites us to think about that. And to use the clues that are in the poem, the information that is there, to give our best guess as to what that caged bird is feeling. We know what it's not, but we're not just told what it is. And we also talk about um, the purpose of the plea, the prayer that's sent up to heaven. What is the purpose of that? What is the caged bird hoping to accomplish? Why is the caged bird singing a prayer like this? And students have, you know, different answers about that based on what's in the poem, based on what they know of history, and based on their own experience as well with the purpose of prayer. So it becomes not just a historical artifact, but something that students from varying experiences, you know, students from different backgrounds can connect to in different ways. It's something that we want to, something that I want to talk about gently with students because my experience is that, again, if I just, if I just tell them what I think it means, then it doesn't mean anything to them. And this is a poem that I think has a lot to offer. I don't want what I do to shut students away from that. So if you have additional poems that you work with in terms of, especially if you pair another poem with this one, or if you look at it on its own, other poems that um, talk about some of these concepts, um, frustration, I think I see in what the caged bird is feeling there, um, that, that sense of not having the freedom that you want. What are some of the ones that come to mind for you? You know I love comments, and I love suggestions about what poems I should check out. Thanks so much for listening. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.